right? Yeah, and her. I think, I think we can safely <laughs> assume that you've been traumatized, both yeah. physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. You, you're, you're torn up. Now, let's say that yeah. you have someone in the studio there with you that, that was also present. Mm-hmm. They saw There's me shoot you. They've been traumatized. Now, let's just say that there was someone outside the studio that didn't see it but heard the shot mm-hmm. and then later found out you were shot. They mm. can be traumatized. Your family, who weren't even in the state, hear about the entire particulars of the event, and they're traumatized. Wow, yeah. Now, now, let, me put, now let me put it in better, another perspective. Let's say there is yet a fourth person in the room with you and I. Mm-hmm. They also saw it. Yeah. Someone comes and says, my God, did you see it? And they go, yeah, I saw it. It was really terrible. He was bleeding and screaming, and when's the dinner? <laughs> so everyone is not traumatized by a traumatic event. But what I want to give you a purview of how far out it could be for people to actually have a stress-related problem requiring some, some attention, right, okay. all the way out to the person that wasn't even there. So now what I want you to put in perspective is several hundred years of trauma. Stay with me. Yes. Not, and not one, not one trauma, but a lifetime of trauma. Mm-hmm. Not just experienced by you, but experienced by the people in your environment whom you love. So mm-hmm. now let's take a look at the residual impact of post-traumatic stress disorder. Post-traumatic stress disorder, when you are diagnosed with that, you actually exhibit certain symptomology. So the symptoms that you exhibit could be anywhere from exaggerated startle response, outbursts of anger, difficulty falling or staying asleep, feeling of foreshortened future, I mean, mm. and it goes, the list goes on, right? Now, yeah. now I want you to take that diagnosis, not post-traumatic slave syndrome. Remember, we're talking about a, a diagnosis of trauma that has nothing to do with, you know, uh, specifically to slavery. It's just trauma in general. But now let's roll it back to slavery. Is it plausible? Because, you know, we can only look at the past with a present lens. So let's, let's yeah. go back to the past and say let's remove anyone who is so startlingly resilient that they're not traumatized. And let's just consider those who saw people beaten, raped, mutilated, sold, in any number of uh, dehumanizing experiences mm-hmm. that ended up with a diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder. Let's just say they had it. Yes. Now, remember the, remember the, I want you to remember the, the uh, symptoms. Exaggerated startle response, outbursts of anger, different, all of those behaviors, right? Yes. Did they get treated? <laughs> that would be no. So now we know they didn't get treated. Right. Now, remember, you're still existing in a community of oppression. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have numerous people that have post-traumatic stress disorder untreated. Mm-hmm. Stay with me. Yeah. So now you're a child growing up in that environment, but you don't know mama's broken. <laughs> you don't understand that the behavior being exhibited is broken behavior. So what do you do? You mm. begin to exhibit the same behaviors, but not, not because of the direct trauma necessarily, but because of socially learned behavior. Wow, yes. Okay, and all you have to do is begin to look at what people have now attributed to black culture, which in my opinion is adaptive behavior. It has, it, has to do with, it has to do with a living in a hostile environment and learning behaviors to survive in that environment and, 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 and deliberately or inadvertently passing that along to your children. Who, mm. by the way, doesn't mean we would. So here's the question. Let's move it even further. So now you have traumatized people that were untreated. Then mm-hmm. you got freed. Now we all free because people always want to point to that. You got free. Question <laughs> number two, did you get any treatment then? No. Any treatment? Any, any free, free, you know, group therapy? I don't think no. you did. I don't think no, you okay, did. Okay, so now let's, th- let's not do the math again. Several hundred years of trauma, no help, freed, mm-hmm. no help. Did the trauma end? Mm. No. No. I love so now we have episode. several hundred years of trauma, no help, freed, mm. no help, more trauma, no help. Mm. We're amazing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we're, we're a miracle. We're a miracle. What, what's and that, think what? about it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You, you see, you get me on a roll. <laughs> I'm on a roll. I was well, no, a please bitch. continue. You continue. gotta jump in if you want to jump in because no, I'm not no, gonna no, stop. <laughs> okay. So what ends up happening then? What ends up happening then is so. So now what we're looking at 
again, it's not a single di- – do you see how you, you, it doesn't become a diagnosis? Yes, you see how – it, 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 matter of fact, I wish it was. Because if it were a diagnosis, um, we could you know, put, get in a room, give you a few pills, talk to you softly twice a week, and maybe you'd be okay. Right? Yeah. So, but that's not what it is because the implication of it, you see, we get re-injured every day in this country. We get re-injured constantly because it's never been addressed. And everyone's in denial that anything ever happened in the first place. So it's like, you know, why can't you, why can't you get it together? Why can't you, you know, manage yourself? You know, why can't you all people just do like the rest of the, you know, these, quote, immigrants and minorities? Do you see what I'm saying? So what you do is you get the pushback that constantly says that you are inherently inept. Mm. You know, that's your problem. Is that, and from my vantage point, you broke my leg, and now you're mad I'm limping. Yes. So would, you say, so, doctor, would you say, doctor, that it's a learned behavior that, you know, even on a psycho, obviously on a psychological level, that it's, I don't want to say mutate, but maybe adapts itself and changes itself, but, it, you know, at its basis, it's the same thing from generation to generation. Is that a fair? Absolutely. Okay. A huge percentage of it is social learning. Be, but you you have to understand I'm, we're, it's social learning with respect to um, both positive and negative learned behavior. Mm-hmm. There's something called, for example, learned helplessness. Are you familiar with that? Yes, yes. Okay, so learned helplessness, when learned helplessness happened, when they were doing work years ago, I mean, you know, a long time ago with animals, and they would take these dogs and put them in a cage, and then they were trying to figure out if they could condition the response of the animal. So what they would do is they shock the dog every time a red light came on. They would shock it, and the dog would immediately jump up and run to the other side of the cage. Mm-hmm. That's called conditioned response because after a while they would not give the shock. They would just turn on the light, and they would, it would create a behavior. So right. that is, uh, you know, that is a conditioned response. So what, then they wondered what would happen if we just shock the dog, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. turn the light on, shock the dog, turn the light off, shock the dog. What ends up happening is the dog will lie down. Wow. Because the dog has learned that no matter what it does, it cannot change the outcome. Mm. Do you understand? So it's called, up. right, well, okay. human beings can experience what is known as learned helplessness, which means uh. that after years and years and years of seeing an ineffectiveness in your environment, you you know how, do you remember when Carter G. Woods in a famous quote says, if once you control a man's thinking, you do not have to tell him to go to the back door? Yes. He will go yes. to the back door without yes. being told. Um, yes. And if there yes. is no back door, he'll cut one out? Yeah. Yes. Similarly, if you've told, if you have lived with people in your environment, and there's also something called vicarious learned helplessness and vicarious efficacy, and I'll talk about because this has to do with the healing part of it. So the, the learned helplessness vicariously, if you are my hero, if you are in a household and the, and the most important and the strongest person in your house is ineffective, meaning that they are being beaten down, they are not being respected, they are unable to achieve vicariously that person goes, if the biggest and the baddest can't, it can't be, um, cannot be, you know, can't be effective, I'm certainly not going to be able to be effective. And then there's, uh, and so you have a vicarious uh, also um, efficacy, which means that if the person in my environment I admire is able to be efficacious, then so can I. Mm-hmm. So we, we learn from what's in our environment. All of us, you, your family, your family figured out how to get to where you are right now. Some families said, okay, you've got to go to school. Everybody got to go to school. Some families say, you've got to get a little business. You've got to own your own, own, be your own man, you own your own business. Some folks said, the Lord will get you through. Everybody in the house, everybody, three generations is a pastor. <laughs> you, then you have, you know, we all got criminals. Yeah, <laughs> you got exactly. criminals that, hey, look. Look, make it happen, you know. So you have these different beliefs, which also gets transferred. Now, now note, I'm talking about a, 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 a community of people who have none, you know, because, again, people say you were enslaved and they act like then the playing field got leveled. Everybody, you know, was fine. Well, after slavery ended, you had the first thing that happened was peonage, which was the unlawful selling of slaves back into slavery. Then after yeah. peonage, you know, you have uh, the sharecroppers, Young folks going back to the plantation because of sundown laws, exclusionary acts, and the Klan. 
Hmm. Right, so when you begin to look at it, then you got Jim Crow, separate but equal. Are we separate now? You bet we are. Have we ever <laughs> been equal? No. Yet there's nothing on the freeway that says next right hood, but you know when you're there, don't you? Yes. Of course indeed. you do. You drive in the hood, you go, Lord, we're in the hood now. How you know? <laughs> oh, wow. You look around, you got folks hanging out in the corner, you got a liquor store, you got a high end, you, instead of a bank, you got a check cashing place. Guess who owns the check cashing place? That would be a bank. That's a yeah. choice. <laughs> right. And then across from that, you got we got to appease them. You got a church, so you 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 got to understand the construct of this as it relates to the larger social dynamic. Because you know people would like to say, just go in a room and sing Kumbaya, everybody gonna be fine. No, because mm. in order for this to be healed, there has to be social justice. Exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, now, they love just you know make up another song about we are the world and make certain you still have haves and have nots. Exactly. Exactly. You see, you you can't you can't avoid the economics of in, of the whole period of enslavement. It was all about money and power, and it mm -hmm. still is. And mm. so the healing is not only one where we come to a realization of our inherent nobility as a people. That's and that, that's crucial. But we also have to have self sufficiency, a sense of of efficacy that I have some impact over the outcomes in my life. Mm -hmm. And that's in order for that to happen, you have to have social justice. Mm -hmm. So do you see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. So when someone says, you know, again, it's not a simple thing. And you notice I haven't mentioned crack. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I haven't I haven't mentioned um, uh, 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 heroin or um, any of the other social ills that you could just pile on top of all of what I just said. Teen pregnancy, you know, two generations of children not parented because Mama was 13 when I was born. Yeah, I, I call those uh, the PTSS nicotine patches. Uh, they pretty oh, much <laughs> constantly yeah, reinforce. I call them the whole of the masses. <laughs> so, so. It constantly uh, reinforces the effects of post-traumatic slave syndrome, and it consistently does so. Um, let me ask you, um, you stated on many occasions uh, with regard to post-traumatic uh, slave syndrome that we can't, heal what we don't understand how do we come to actually understand it um i guess uh to teach it at least to our children and 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 um those who um are listening here's here's what i would say to the people who are listening you know i again i'm 54 years old i'm an educator i've taught elementary middle high school and university i'll teach anybody that stands in front of me Okay, you give me give me a minute. I'm gonna tell them something, and, and I feel that way. Um, just, and, and that and that's the reality. Although it sounds like a joke, it's true. Because wherever I am, I'm I, I feel like I'm not I'm not giving my children nor my grandchildren over to a system that has a disincentive to tell them the truth. Mm. And we are foolish as you think by sending your children to a system that's trying to avoid. The dissonance of experience, it, has, it has experienced by basically erasing our reality. They are not going to tell you, Bluff. They'll give you two pictures about slavery and, mm. and maybe a half a paragraph, and one of the pictures looked like happy slaves, right? Mm. So you have, that's about as much as they're going to say, because here's the reality. When I pull the cover back on post-traumatic, when I pull mm -hmm. the cover back to look at us, guess who else I pull the covers off? <laughs> mm -hmm. And so that becomes the problem. We can't have little Timmy and Cindy finding out we were barbaric, mm, raping right. and, and mutilating, we, and, and, and parting folks out and getting souvenirs. We can't have Timmy and Cindy knowing that. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is say the problem with these people, and even when you look at the media and every other major institution in America that had to be complicit in normalizing what was done to us. So inevitably what was... Which we do is we say, well, they're just, you know, they're just.